A look at a tiny mammal in our Riverland Wildlife segment this morning, the Dunart. Joining me is Tamara Gordon, a university student and wildlife demonstrator with Animals Anonymous. Welcome, Tamara. Hey, Nero. How are you going? I'm really well, thank you. How many species of Dunart do we have in Australia? Well, in Australia, we have 19 species of Dunart. And how many of those would be in South Australia and maybe even in the Riverland? Yeah, well, we get 10 here in South Australia, all throughout, so western parts of SA, eastern, northern, um, even on the Nullarbor as well. And in the Murray Mallee, we get three. So we have the common dunner, the fat tail dunner, but we don't like to call him fat. We like to call him healthy tail dunner. <laughs> <laughs> um, he gets a little bit sensitive. Um, and the stripe-based dunner as well. Um, both very, very cute. All very cute animals. Well, sorry, what was the last one? The, the stripe-faced dunner. Oh, okay. Are any of those sort of rarer than the others? Well, they're all classified in the conservation status as least concerned. So that's the lower rankings. So technically they're common, but some areas they may be more abundant than others. But generally um, they're doing not too bad. Um, yeah, they're doing quite well. Well, that's good. Um, and now I know of at least one that's been that's shown up in pitfall trapping surveys in the Riverland, and that is the common Dunart. Quite a cute little fella. Can, you know, fairly small. Yeah, they are. Yep, they look like a mouse as well. You know, they're, they're small... Um, but they are really beautiful and quite intelligent little animals, I might admit. How do you know that they're intelligent? I watch them. We have pet ones. Um, not commons, but we do have fat tails and they are beautiful. The way they hunt, um, their senses, they're all alert. Yeah, they're excellent little dudes. How, how do they hunt? Well, they sneak up. So they have excellent hearing. So we, I do watch them quite a lot, um, stay up sometimes all night watching these little dudes putting in, you know, we go out hunting for some invertebrates for them because they do eat a lot of invertebrates. And, you know, say, for example, if you might put a little cricket in there or a little beetle um, and you have a lot of leaf litter, they'll listen. They'll stand up almost like a meerkat and they'll listen. And they might hear a little rustle and then they'll run over there and dig through the leaf litter and then they've got, they've got it and they've eaten it before you even know. That's incredible, isn't yeah. it? So the fat-tailed dunnarts or um, common and the stripe face, did you say, yeah. are, are, is one of those species kind of better adapted than some of the others? Yeah, they are. Well, in the Murray Mallee, so where you are, you know, there's quite a lot of um, farmland and the fat-tailed dunnart, they prefer open grassland and low shrubland. So um, farmland for them is 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 good is good habitat so other species may not adapt as well as these but these do quite well in farmland so um you know the insects it depends on the rainfall as well if there's a lot of insects around um their population can do quite well in farmland areas so yeah they look a bit like a mouse as you mentioned are they a rodent or are they fairly closely related oh norel you silly little bugger. <laughs> Uh, well, let me say that we, you and I, all right, it's not an insult because I am as well, we are more closely related to a mouse than they are. That's incredible. I know. They are really closely related to the Tasmanian devil, the savage little buggers. Are they? Um, yeah, and we um, are placental mammals like mice are, like raised rodents are. So these are not a placental mammal? No, they're a marsupial, so they have a pouch. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, therefore, they, they're sort of closely related to the kangaroo. Yes. More closely but, than but, a rodent. But, but they're a desiurid, so um, they're a carnivorous marsupial. Yeah, so different different family. They're in the desiuridae family like quolls and fanagals and antichinus, Tasmanian devils. So, yeah, they're in a different family, but they are a marsupial like a kangaroo is a marsupial. So, we talk about the three species that we get there, the common stripe-faced and the fat-tailed donut. They are different species, so they would not be able to breed with each other. Yep, that's right. Yep, so species that um, don't come in contact with each other that are a different species, yeah, don't don't breed together. Are they are they good breeders? Well, it depends. Sometimes you might get a really good year, and others you might not. The males, basically, their whole lives, they will just keep going for it. They're uh, funny little buggers. The males are. Um, so the males and females. So in captivity, we put males and females together, obviously. Um, you know, we like to try and breed them for education. And the males and females, sometimes they might be like a married couple, might not do anything. So we might have to swap them around. 
um, and then you might get a very active pair. <laughs> and the males, they, you know, these donuts only have quite a, uh, you know, a short lifespan, you know, one to two years, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter. Yeah. Um, and the males just go their whole lives, yeah. Uh, so then does the female carry the young in her pouch? Yes, exactly, yep. And they're really beautiful. We once had a female with eight babies. In her pouch? That. Yep. And they're just... Once they get to a certain age, so a certain size, um, they all just hang out of the pouch, and it looks quite funny. You know how um, you know some spiders will carry babies on their backs. So it's like it's like that. Donuts will um, once the babies get big and they're sort of independent, they'll hang on mum's back, and mum just walks around like, oh, is it over yet? I bet that must get. And for how long will she carry them until they're oh, what sort might. of size? Yeah, till they're weaned. So maybe she might have them in her pouch and on her back for maybe 13 weeks. Okay. Um, yeah. And what do they eat? You mentioned crickets and those sorts of things. Do they Are they completely um, carnivorous? Yeah, well, they are a carnivore, but we do actually give them for something different, a little bit of fruit sometimes, and they do eat it. We um, will give them little bits of corn. And sometimes they will pick up the corn before they pick up the meat. So even though they are carnivorous, they will sometimes choose a slightly different diet, but then they're mainly carnivorous. Um, you know, they'll, they'll eat ants, spiders, beetles, scorpions. They'll even take down other vertebrates like small lizards. Yeah. Um, as well, yeah. Tamara Gordon is with me, Wildlife Demonstrator with Animals Anonymous, and we're talking about the dunnart. There are three different species of them we might find in the Riverland, the common, the striped-faced, and the fat-tailed, although we like to call it healthy size tail, <laughs> <laughs> as Tamara mentioned. Uh, where would we be more likely to see them? So more um, habitat the- areas. So they do move around quite a lot, but you will find them in spinifex areas, um, hollow logs on the ground are very important for these guys. They'll build little nests in hollow logs. A lot of leaf litter as well, um, even under rocks, salt bush, blue bush. So really, um, habitat areas are the best for diversity and especially for um, having their food items as well because, you know, having the plants attract the invertebrates which help the dunnarts. So um, dunnarts can't live in an area where they don't have a food source. So, um, yeah, conserving habitat areas are extremely important for these little dudes. Um, and they're really good because, you know, sometimes I might, you know, meet people that are scared of spiders or scared of beetles, um, but they really love the dunnarts. It's like, well, you know, they're really important as well because we need those squirmy little um, invertebrates to you know, sustain our dunnarts and other cute little carnivorous marsupials. Yeah, I can't believe this tiny little thing's got a pouch and it can carry up to eight babies in it. That yeah. is incredible. Would we ever see one around the house? You might do. Yep, definitely. Um, the striped face dunnart, which is really adorable, um, in one night it's been recorded that they can move up to two kilometres in one night. So even though you might not normally see them around your house, because they are nocturnal, so, you know, they're active while we're sleeping yep. um, or partying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, you may still see them around. So I've spoken to some people when we were up in um, Barmer last year and they've, they've seen dunnarts um, in, their, in their backyards. They might have, um, might have dug a little hole for a fence post and not covered it in yet and they've had a dunnart in there. So they are around. They do, they do get around quite a lot. Would they, are they a pest at all to, um, to farmers or to people at, you know, people at home? Well, I wouldn't say so because um, I, I'd say they're beneficial because they do, they cut down a lot of the pests. Yeah, they, eat they a lot do. of those bugs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, I, I don't like going outside and getting attacked by mosquitoes. You know, these guys um, might not eat mosquitoes, but, you know, they do eat other um, pest insects. Mm. So I think they're really beneficial. Yeah. The one thing I can't tell from the photo that I've got here, and I will put this up on the blog as well and then link it to our Facebook page, this interview, but uh, I can't tell if it's got a tail or not. Do they have a little tail? Tail. Tail, yeah. Tail, yeah, they do. Yep. Um, so the striped face dunna. And the, the fat tail, which is the healthy tail, <laughs> um, they do have quite fat tails and that's where they store a lot of food and energy. So in cooler areas, if it's, um, or if, if their food source is not as abundant as normal, they can rely off the food stores in their tail. Um, the common dunnart you'll see almost does have a tail like a mouse. It's quite skinny and long. Um, but the other two species that you're more likely to get around there do have quite a fat tail.
And and their tiny little feet, they're really cute too. Oh, they're adorable. Yep, absolutely adorable. Are they? Do they use them for digging? They yeah, they might dig um, under rocks, um, like they do make little burrows and nests under rocks, and also um, they use their hands to grabbing on to their prey. So we once put a spider in with our little dudes just to watch and um, have a bit of, uh, you know, interaction with them. Um, and they, they grab the food with their hands and then they, they kill it and, and just just, uh, <laughs> just assembly it. Pull it apart. Yeah, it's yeah. nature at work, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, thank you very much for being a part of the program. You're very welcome. Thanks, Narelle. Tamara Gordon, Wildlife Demonstrator with Animals Anonymous, uh, talking about the Dunart, three different species in our region, common, striped-faced and fat-tailed.